By the end of the video, you will be able to track purchase event on your WooCommerce store using Google Tag Manager, Data Layer, and Facebook Pixel. This will help you track all the Facebook ads conversion properly and you will be tracking all the conversion events. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Hassan and I have helped more than 1000 websites and 25 different agencies configuring Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, Facebook Pixel, and all the other good stuff related to tracking on their platforms. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I configure Facebook Pixel's purchase event on a WooCommerce store using Google Tag Manager and Data Layer. When I'm creating this video, I have three people in this mind. This video might be helpful for all the business owners who are trying to configure Facebook Pixel on their WooCommerce store themselves, or all the other agencies who are trying to configure this setup for their clients, or all the freelancers who are just trying to upgrade their skills so they can help their clients track better conversions on Facebook Pixel. I would really like to mention that this is not a coding in intensive videos so I'm not going to show you how the PHP work or how the theme templates work and this is also not any kind of general WooCommerce training session so don't expect me to explain how the coupons work, how the product templates work and all the things. However, I am still going to show you how we are going to create data layer inside the WooCommerce store using some different plugins that might be very helpful. To make your life a lot more easier, I have divided this video into four different sections. In the first section of the video, we are going to configure Google Tag Manager across all the pages of the website. In the second section of the video, we are going to see how we can configure Facebook Pixel configuration tag so we can track the page view event and the base configuration events that comes with the Facebook Pixel. In the third section of the video, I'm going to show you how we can enable the data layer using a custom plugin that has been created by a very generous team on WooCommerce platform. And in the fourth section of the video, we will be creating the tags, variables, and all the things that we need to track the information for the purchase event from the data layer and send it back to the Facebook Pixel. So without further ado, let's just get into my computer so we can get working. There are multiple ways to configure Google Tag Manager on the WordPress website. And one of the easiest method is using the plugin. Since we are going to be using the same plugin to create the data layer event later in the third section, so we are going to add the plugin that we need right here. So if you go to your WooCommerce stores backend, scroll down to the plugin sections and click on add new plugin. This will take you to another page where we have the option to add any kind of plugin that we want. So let's just search for the plugin that we need. It's called GTM for WP. This is one of the best plugins I have used for all kind of WooCommerce website and this is great. This one is created by Thomas Greger. You can just click on install now and then click on activate to make sure that the plugin is really active on all the pages of your website. Perfect. Now we have activated the plugin and everything should be working fine. Just to make sure everything is working good, let's just go back to the dashboard so we can see once the page has been refreshed. Great. On the top, you will be seeing this message that says to start using the plugin, you need to enter the GTM ID. You can click right here or you can go to the settings option and you will see another option for Google Tag Manager. Once you will click this option, this will take you to the back end of the plugin settings thing, right? So the only thing we need to make sure the Google Tag Manager is firing on all the pages of the website is the GTM container ID. There are multiple ways to get the GTM container ID. So let's just go to our Google Tag Manager container to get that. Uh, if you are new to Google Tag Manager container, let me take one minute to explain what exactly is GTM container. A GTM container is basically, this is just one tag management system that can help make sure everything is in one place and all the tracking is really comprehensive and in one place. The best benefit of this platform is that it's totally free and you can just start creating any container that you want. So once you have created your default container, I already have a container. So we can just get the container ID from the top right corner. So once you click on the ID, you can copy it from here or you can copy the ID from right here. So let's just copy this ID and go back to the back end of the plugin and paste the ID right here. Perfect. Let's hit save changes just to make sure that all the changes we have made are effected through the plugin. There is one minor glitch in this plugin is that as soon as you hit save changes, it, it, turns off the container code so make sure that the container code is on and click on save changes once again. Uh, this should perfectly add Google Tag Manager container on all the pages of the website but let's just not rely on our intuition. Let's just go to Google Tag Manager and check if everything is working alright. On the top right corner you will see another option for previewing. So once you click on the preview it will open a temporary debug window which will be connected with your website and using this temporary debug window we can basically see all kind of events that are firing on the website inside this debug window. So we can check uh, the variables, different data layer event names and figure out if there is anything missing alright. 
Great. So now we have connected this temporary debug window on the uh, with the Google Tag Manager, and you can install this Google Tag Legacy Assistant Chrome extension. It will show you that the Google Tag Manager container is firing perfectly. Uh, you know that it is firing perfectly because this thing is green. If this is red, that means it's not good. As long as it's green, blue, or yellow, that's fine. And you can also see this uh, bottom section which says Tag Manager has connected successfully. So that means Tag Manager is working alright. We can also verify the same information using the debug window and we can see that the debug window has been connected successfully and there is just one container that is loading on the website. So that's good. If you have multiple Google Tag Manager containers or if you have GA4 properties added using GTAG, then you will see different uh, container loading. But we don't have to worry about that because this is not a GA4 tutorial. Great, we are done with the first section. Now in the second section of the video, we need to make sure that our Facebook Pixels configuration tag is firing on the website. There are multiple ways to add Facebook Pixel configuration tag on our website, but first we need the Facebook Pixel ID for that. So let's just go back to our website on business.facebook.com. This is where your business assets are. And you can click on this all tool option. You can find it on the top or sometimes on the bottom. And the option we are looking for is called event manager. Once you will click on event manager, this will take you to the section where we have all the data sources and pixels. Previously, Facebook used to call everything as pixels, but now they have renamed everything to data sets because they just want to make our life a lot more easier as analytics and advertisers. Great. So now you are on the overview section. Let's just quickly go to the data sources. This is where you might have all of the pixels that uh, you have created in the past. Uh, if you don't have any pixels right now, you can just click on this green button to create a pixel. However, since I already have a pixel, demo pixel, I'm just going to copy this data set ID or you might find it as pixel ID. Great. Now we can go back to the Google Tag Manager container. And since we have the GTM container on all the pages of the website, we will just add the Facebook configuration tag in Google Tag Manager and it will fire it on all the pages because page view event is essentially on all the pages. Now we can add this code using a custom HTML tag, but however, I always like to work with template tags because template tags makes our life a lot more easier. So let's just go to templates and search for the Facebook pixel template tag that has been created by Facebook archive team. Uh, once you click on search template and you can search for Facebook pixel, this is the tag that we are going to use. Uh, seems like I have already added this tag, but once you click on this and you can there will be an option to add the tag right there. So once you have added the tag, it will show like this. And let's just go to the tag section to make sure that we can configure the tag properly. Click on the new button on the top right corner. Since we want this tag to fire on all the pages of the website, so for the triggers, I'm going to select all pages. And for the tags, we are going to select this the custom Facebook pixel tag. So let's just select the custom Facebook tag. And the only thing it requires is the Facebook pixel ID. Uh, we can paste the ID right here and rename this to Facebook configuration tag. However, we can do one minor optimization right here. Instead of instead of just pasting the ID like this, we can create a constant variable for this one because we might need this ID for multiple things for purchase event for other kind of events that you might need in later on. So let's just rename this to Facebook pixel ID and hit save. Great, this is the only thing that we were required to do and now let's just hit save. Doing this, we have successfully added Facebook Pixel on all the pages of the website. But again, as in the first section, we verified everything. We are going to verify the information again too. So let's click on the preview button. So the debug window will be connected with our website again. And uh, I'm going to show you two or three different ways where you can verify this information. The first thing is using Facebook Pixel helper extension. You can download it from the uh, Google and we can see that the page view event has fired and this is the pixel ID. We can also verify the same information from the debug window and you can see that as soon as the container was loaded on the website, we see that the Facebook pixel tag has fired successfully. That's great. We can also verify the same information on the Facebook event manager. If you go to the test sections of the website and go back to your website and hit refresh so that a new page view event has triggered and we can then verify this new event inside the event manager's test section. So let's just wait a few seconds as soon as the Google Tag Manager container is connected, we see that the Facebook Pixel tag has fired. And if we go to the event section, yes, we can see that the page view event has came in from this URL. Perfect. So we are done with the second section. And in the third section of the video, we are going to see how we can enable data layer so that we can get all the enhanced information such as value, 
currency items that has been purchased, the transaction ID and all the good things that we need. So for that, we are going back to the WordPress backend where we have the settings open. If you don't know where the settings is and the settings and Google Tag Manager. Now we are going to go into the integration section and you will find an option for WooCommerce. And under the WooCommerce, the only thing we have to do is click track e-commerce events. It's just that easy. Once you click on this, the other setting I really like is to clear the object before firing the event. And this will make a lot our life a lot more easier. So let's just hit save changes. And doing this, ideally, the Google should add all the e-commerce events inside the dev layer. But as uh, we have done in all the previous section, let's just not assume that everything is working alright. Let's just quickly take it, test if everything is working alright. So for that, let's just directly go to the cart because I feel like I already have an item in the cart. Let's just go to checkout. And let's make a test conversion to see if the purchase data layer is working alright or not. Uh, seems like I have all the information here. Let's try placing an order. Great. As soon as I have placed the order, I have been redirected to this order received page. And if I go back to this web uh, debug window, I can see that there is a new event inside the data layer, which is called purchase. And if we expand this event, I can see it has all the details such as currency. What was the transaction ID? What was the total value of the purchase and which item was purchased from the user. So in the next section of the video, which is the last and final section, we are going to take this information from the data layer, use create variables and send this back to the Facebook pixel. So as we are tracking the page view event, we can successfully track the purchase event also. To do this, we have to create a lot of variables for this one, because first thing we have to save all of these variables inside data layer variables. And then we have to map data layer variables to Facebook pixel event. Perfect. Let's just go directly to the variable section and create all the variables that we might need for this one. So let's click on new. And since all of the variables are going to be data layer variables, we can open both of the windows side by side. So it will make our life a lot more easier in when we are going to copy and paste. The first variable we need is the currency one and the currency is inside the e-commerce object. So let's create e-commerce dot currency. And let's rename the variable to e-commerce dot currency. Now we need the same thing for transaction ID. So let's just create another data layer variable for transaction ID. Uh, let's fix this. And let's rename this to DLV e-commerce dot transaction ID. We need to do the same thing for affiliation. So let's create another variable for uh, e-commerce dot affiliation. And let's rename this to DLV e-commerce dot affiliation. Now the next one is the value. So let's create another one. And this one is going to be e-commerce dot value. The value parameter, this will tell Facebook pixel that what was the value of the actual purchase event that fired on the website and the text right now in my product section, I have not added any kind of text because the shipping was also free and there was no tax on the uh, purchases. However, if you have any kind of tax information, you can add that tax information right there. Since for me, the shipping cost was also zero. Therefore, the data layer variable have the value zero. However, if you have any other shipping costs, it will show right there. So let's do e-commerce dot shipping. The next one we have e-commerce dot coupon. So let's create one variable for e-commerce dot coupon and let's rename this one to DLV e-commerce dot coupon. And the last one we have is items. So let's create one last variable for items and let's rename this one to DLV e-commerce dot items. Perfect. Now we have all the variables that we needed. However, there is one more thing that we have to do. These data layer variables, they are in the format of Google Analytics 4 format and Facebook and Google, they are not actually very best friends. So they don't accept each other's format. So now we need to do one more thing is to convert the format of the Google Analytics 4 parameter to something that Facebook pixel accepts. Uh, if you want to see uh, where you can find the documentation on the uh, for Facebook pixel event, you can just search for Facebook pixel event parameters. And this will show you all the parameters that you need for the conversion event. They have a developer documentation where you can find all the things. However, let's just not make our life more uh, 
complicated because I already know what parameters we need. So I'm going to show you all those. So let's just go back to the Google Tag Manager and to make things a lot more easier as we use the Facebook Pixels uh, template tag, I am also going to introduce one more template tag that will help you a lot. So let's just go to the template section and under the variables, we are going to use the Facebook parameter generator by Step Team. This is a really good template and I have used this for millions and millions of pages. And if you go back to the variable section, uh, how what this is going to do is create contents array, content IDs array and content name array that is required by Facebook Pixel. So let's just create a new template. And the only thing it requires is the object array. We have the object of items under e-commerce.items and the first thing we are going to create is contents. You might see that it requires four more things. So let's just open the data layer that we have right here and let's see where exactly is the product ID. The product ID for us is under item underscore ID. The name of the item is under item underscore name. The price is under price and the quantity is under quantity. Uh, instead of item ID, I could have also used the ID because both of them are the same thing. You can use either one, but since GA4 uses item underscore ID, I'm going to stick with that. Let's rename this one to Facebook parameter generator. And since we are using e-commerce items and this will generate contents array. Perfect. Now we need to do the same thing five more times so we can generate content IDs, content names and everything. Instead of creating it from the default, I'm just going to click on a copy button and then let's create the content IDs from right here. Great. I'm going to show this whole process one more time. So if you have any questions, they might get clear. So again, I'm going to select the gen uh, Facebook parameter generator template. The only thing is re it requires is the items array. And then we are going to create the names of items. ID is under ID. We are looking is inside this data layer event. If, if the name of the items were under name, then we would have written here name. And the last thing is quantity. Perfect. Let's rename this to Facebook parameter generators, e-commerce items and content name. That's it. Save. And we need one more thing for the quantity of the purchase, which is called num items in G in Facebook pixel. So let's select that and let's rename this to num items. Perfect. These are all the variables that we needed. So we can just go back to the tag section and create a new tag that will find only when the purchase event happens. So let's just click on new. Unlike the configuration tag, we don't want this tag to fire on all the pages of the website. We only want it to fire when this event happens in the data layer. So we are going to create a new trigger for this one. And the trigger is going to be a custom event. The name of the custom event is purchase. Correct. So let's rename it to custom event purchase and hit save. And for the tag, we are going to select the Facebook pixel tag template. We can paste the ID for the Facebook pixel right here. However, since we have created a constant variable for this one, let's select that. The event we want to send is called purchase. And we also want to send some additional information with this event because we want to track the event parameters. The first thing we want to send is value. We also want to send currency. We want to send order underscore ID. We want to send contents array. We also want to send uh, the list of the content IDs. We want to send content underscore type. This will tell Facebook pixel what was the type of the products. We also want to send the name of the items. We want to send num underscore items. Then we have to send tax and shipping. I think the last one I missed is affiliation and coupon. Great. We have variables for all of these. So we're just going to select and import them one by one for the value. It's under e-commerce dot value. The currency is inside e-commerce dot currency. The order ID is under transaction underscore ID. We can see right here. The order ID is this one. For the contents, we created a custom template for this one. So let's just select that. Then we have content IDs right here. For the content type, this is going to be product. 
the content names is this one then we have num items which is also a facebook parameter generator variables and then we can select text shipping affiliation right here and the last one is coupon Perfect, we have all the things that we needed. So let's rename this tag to Facebook Pixel EEC Purchase. Great, now we have finally configured the purchase event and you should be tracking everything once you hit the publish button. But as like all the other section, we are going to make sure that everything is working all right before we publish anything. So let's just click on the preview button. So this temporary debug window is connected with our website and let's open both of these side by side so we can we don't need to open them side by side we can just do one test conversion so let's just add uh, this item to the cart previously we did test conversion on this one so let's just go to the cart <coughs> and let's hit uh, proceed to checkout Since we already have all of our information filled out, I'm just going to click on place order and place my order directly on the platform. Seems like the order was successful and I am redirected to the order success page. We can very well that if the purchase event is working fine using the pixel helper and we can see that the purchase event has fired and it has all the details of the items and it is also has the content array and all the things that we needed. It has the content name and it has content IDs and everything is working all right. We can also verify this information going back to the Facebook Pixel event manager where we have the test section open and you can see that this Facebook Pixel purchase event just came in and it has the value, currency, content IDs and everything is working alright. The last thing we need is to make sure that we hit publish so all the changes we have made they are not in the draft mode so let's do that. Added Facebook purchase event my spellings are not the best but you get the point right so let's hit purchase so now you have successfully tracked the purchase event on facebook pixel using woocommerce store if you want to see how to configure begin checkout event you can click this video right here